Welcome to our review of Outsmarted, a hybrid physical digital trivia game from Qplay, who we have to thank for sending us a review copy to check out. Outsmarted is a modern trivia board game published in 2020 by Qplay after a rather successful Kickstarter campaign. This roll, move, and answer a question style game lets you play with two to 24 players. So you're going to be playing in groups of up to four if you play more than six players in one sitting. The game is app-driven. It can be played with everyone sitting around the same table or through remote play. Game time ranges depending on the game mode you choose and can be as short as half an hour. Mm -hmm. The box says the game is for ages 8 plus, and we don't see anything wrong with that. Now, Outsmart is going to feel very familiar to anyone who's played popular trivia games going back to the 80s. You roll a move and then answer a question based on what color you landed on. The thing is, Outsmarted modernizes the classic trivia game experience from this point on. Well, that part's going to feel the same. You are going to play different ways. Like, you can complete and, and try to do the collect things in each color. So, answer a primary question in each color and collect things. In this case, it's rings. Or you can play for points, which is a great change. You can play a full game with a bonus lightning round, or you can play a timed game with, as Sean mentioned, short as half an hour if you want to play nice and quick game. In all the modes, though, it is the players that get to pick the categories, and players are going to get questions tailored to their age group. Now, there are other improvements as well, which we'll get into in a bit. First off, a note about the components. Outsmarted comes with a fairly large four-panel board, one oversized D6, and a set of great-looking pawns that feature a diverse group of historical figures. Now, to use all this, you also need the free Outsmarted app. Now, this is available on pretty much all devices. You've got Android, iOS, and Steam. A copy of the game includes one license that you can use on up to three devices. No, only the owner of the game needs a key. You don't need a key to be able to just play the game. Now, there is a set of rules in the box, but they aren't great. They are in a number of languages, and I don't think English was the original. Most of the book just covers how to get the app and set it up. Now, my only real complaint in regards to components is that the colors on the board could have been a little more clear and differentiated. The red and orange colors in particular are very similar, and they're actually slightly different than the colors used in the app. Even people without any color-based vision issues may have a hard time with these. And it kind of baffles me because this could have been easily fixed by including some symbology on the squares, but instead every square has the same Q logo on it instead of a way to differentiate the different ones. Uh, personally, depending on the light, I have, I have had numerous issues looking or to, trying to tell the difference between the red and the orange. Uh, yeah. and, and you need to look at the board to double check the comparison between the two colors to know which one you're actually dealing with. But now you know what you get in the box and you've grabbed the app. Let's get into how to actually play Outsmarted. So you start with the app. You set up the kind of game you want to play through a bunch of options you get to select from. Like you can do an individual or a team game. The game length, which could be a full game, and that ends once one player collects all six rings and completes the bonus round. Or you can play a timed game, and the preset times are 30, 60, or 90 minutes. Then select if you want to play for rings or points. In point mode, the first question you are asked is, e is worth 100 points. For each correct answer in a row, the points you earn goes up by 100 points. All the ring questions start at 500 points. Now, there's also some options to speed up the game. You can reduce the amount of animations, and you can do a quicker version of the final round. Now, once you've decided on what type of game you want to play, you need to set up each of the players by giving them a name and age range. You only have to do this once for each player, as the next time you play, they'll already be listed in the app. Now, by creating individual player like accounts in the app, it's kind of cool because you're going to get neat things like your overall accuracy, your win rate, and your high scores being tracked between games. Now, once everyone is in the app, you're then going to select which players are actually playing this game and pick which playing piece each will use. Anyone playing remotely or choosing to use the app at the table will now have to select which character they are playing on their own device. While the game can be played with just one device at the table, we strongly suggest that every player brings the game on their own. Next is picking the six categories to use for this game. Now, there are a wide variety of categories that come with the base game. 
plus there's the option to purchase even more categories as in-app purchases. Now, before you want to rush away and do that, make sure you check your email because I am getting a surprising amount of emails from Qplay sending out uh, offering discounts or even free categories for various holidays and such. Like right now, they have a 4th of July sale. Now, this is just a small selection of the categories we personally try to. Pub quiz, back to school, sound and music, entertainment, Halloween, 80s hits, man's best friend, vintage cartoons, the logo quiz, and where on earth? Now, when we play, we lead, let each player pick a category to make it as fair as possible for everyone at the table. When playing with less than six, we let some players pick twice or include uh, generic trivia categories like pub quiz. Now, with six categories chosen, you're ready to go. Everyone places their pawn on the starting spot in the middle of the board. The app shows you whose turn it is. Each turn, the active player rolls the die and moves their pawn on the board. They then answer a question based on which color they land on, selecting the appropriate category in the app. The question is presented on the app, and the player picks between four options. To get the correct answer, they score points if you're playing for points, and then get to go again. Now, along with the basic squares, there are also six ring spaces. These have to be landed on by an exact roll, but there are re-roll spots on the board close to each of these to make them easier to hit. These present harder questions which earn extra points and a ring when answered. As a nice touch, once you land on a ring, you stay there until you get a question right. Now, when answering questions, you also have three assists you can use. There's a 50-50 that eliminates two possible answers, a 30-second timer increase, or the ability to skip a question entirely. Now, sometimes after you've rolled, moved, and you select a category, you'll get some kind of random bonus reward. You'll spin a wheel on the app or pull a lever or open a, a safe and get a bonus. These include additional assists or a score multiplier for the question you're about to answer. You do never get a phone a friend assist, however. No, <laughs> no you now, do not. When you get a question wrong, you lose 50 points if playing with scores on and the play passes to the next player. At the end of each round, the Outsmarted app lets you know everyone's score and how everyone ranks. Play continues until either one player wins or the set time runs out. When time runs out, the winner is the player with the most points or rings, with players having the same number of rings sharing a victory. And that's Outsmarted in a nutshell. If you dig trivia games, you're going to want to pick up Outsmarted. It's that simple. This game perfectly accomplishes what it set it out to do, and that is to be a modern version of the trick-taking games we all grew up with. It's like that game that rhymes with Pivial Tursuit, but fun. <laughs> now, my personal favorite part of the game is the fact you get to choose what categories to play with. No longer are you stuck having to answer questions in a category you know next to nothing about hoping to get lucky. Another bonus of picking categories on an app is that the app keeps track of what questions it's asked before, and you won't get repeat questions, which removes the answer memorization problem that was an aspect of traditional trivia games with some players. Now, if someone else at the table likes obscure Roman architecture, you might still have that category in play, depending on how you choose your categories. But you won't have to put up with the same dreaded categories every single game mm -hmm. if nobody at the table wants them. Now, another big advantage of app-driven questions is that the questions can be catered to the players. This is a trivia game where kids, teens, and adults can all sit down together and play without the adults having an advantage because the app will adjust the questions for age group. Another additional uh, aspect of using apps is you can have things like musical questions, which mm -hmm. are simply impossible in a card-based game of, uh, of trivia. As well, there are regional adaptations. So mm -hmm. questions localized for your player country that you specified during setup. Now, when logging into the app, you select what country you're from, and that actually affects the questions you get, as well as the language the questions are presented in, which is also something you don't get from the old cardboard versions. This was a big deal for me, having grown up as a Canadian playing trivia games that expected me to know things about U.S. politics. Though in Windsor, there is a chance we'd know more about U.S. politics than Canadian. True, very true. Now, the final advantage, I think, for the app is that the questions are all current. 
and updated based on how things change. There's even a current events category that is, uh, I haven't tried this one, but it's supposed to include up-to-date events. Now, this is a big deal for anyone who has played those old classic trivia games and had to answer a question about Czechoslovakia or the USSR. Now, one issue we did run into, and this is only once in all our plays, and we have played this quite a bit, is an actual wrong answer. Now, this was for a math-based question where they failed to apply Bedmus. Now, the problem was there was no way in the app to accept the correct answer and give the player their points. There's no way to go, we made a mistake, no, give them the points anyway. And I also didn't really see an easy way to report a wrong answer to QPlay. Now, again, we've only seen this once in all our multiple plays, and trust me, the math-based, you see them on Facebook everywhere all the time where it's like, you know, two plus six times two equals, and the some people think you just read it left to right, and other people who took math no, you put the times first. So I don't know on that one. So I did manage to find a complicated method of reporting problems uh, on one of the localizations of their websites, but <laughs> it was painful to find. And I'm not going to expect anyone to go find it. And frankly, it didn't specify anything about problems in the game. So I don't even know if it would have worked if we had used that to report it. Yeah. Now, another thing I do like in this game is the assist system. I just thought it was cool. Like the first time, like having assists is neat, but like the first time that, that they pop up is really cool too. Like you're like, oh, and I get this cool bonus. I thought that was neat. Now, one thing that I didn't mention is when you're setting up the game, you can actually give players additional assists or take them away. So that's another way you can balance player age and skill levels, which is cool. Now, the bonus system I loved. Like, the first time it popped, I'm like, oh, cool, it's an app, and I can spin a wheel to see what I get. That's really neat that that's in there. Uh, but then it's it's purely random who gets that and when it, when it comes up. And it just, to me, it would have been way cooler if that was a catch-up mechanic. If the player in last points, the player with the least points every round, had maybe a better chance of getting one of these bonuses to use as a capture mechanic. As it is, the player in the lead is just as likely to get a boost as anyone else. Now, while there is some fairness in a purely random system, fairness isn't really the ideal goal in this situation. You want to be helping certain players who are perhaps struggling. Now, all of this app-driven play does come with some problems. The biggest one being that this is an app-driven game that happens to have a board that's really only used to track where everyone is. Well, the game can be played with one device, and it even comes with a stand to hold your device. You're not going to want to play with the device at the top of the board like they show in all the pictures. Like, for one, how like is one person going to answer the answers or everyone's going to lean over the board and tap it? Um, you're going to end up passing this around. And if you're passing it around, only one person can see what's going on. So you're basically saying they're doing nothing while another player is playing with the thing. Um, if you are stuck doing this, I would recommend having a tablet at least, maybe having one player that enters all the, like almost plays like the host to enter the questions, or maybe run the Steam version on a PC monitor big enough that everyone can see it. Because despite being designed as a one device game, this just plays so much better if everyone at the table has their own device and everyone but the game owner joins in. Though this does lead to a group of people sitting around a table, staring at their phones and not interacting, especially in the timed modes where you're just trying to rush ahead. Yeah, that part is true. Now, one advantage of going digital, though, is the ability to play remotely. This could mean all the players each on their own device located anywhere in the world, or it could be a mix. It could be me sitting with Deanna, Kat, and Tori and Sean playing remotely, which I do think is really cool. Now, the app does include a digital die roller and a, a graphic representation of the board for the remote player and in app chat so everyone can talk to each other. The problem with this, though, is manipulating the digital board on the app. On a small device, it is rather difficult to get your pawn onto the right square. You'd be fine on a tablet, but you will have difficulty mm -hmm. on a phone. It's almost easier to just have the players actually in front of the board move your piece for you and give you your options after each roll. Even zooming in on the phone wasn't enough to help with pawn placement as they, they cut off the zoom at a certain point. You couldn't, you know, zoom infinite. So overall, I found a lot to like and outsmarted. 
This is an improved and modernized version of traditional trivia-based board games. Having played this, I can't see playing any of the classics ever again. Now, there is one thing this game didn't change from those old games is the fact it's a trivia game. And not everyone likes trivia, myself being one of those people. Though for a trivia game, this is the best I've played. It's just not the kind of game I'm going to rush out and look to play on my own. But I will say, if a group comes over and is like, hey, let's play some Outsmarted, sure, I'll play a round of Outsmarted. I'll insist we do a timed game, not a full game, and I'll probably ask to play something else when we're done. On the other hand, I'll happily play this pretty much any time. Uh, the fact that you can customize the categories, put this one over the top for me, as I like trivia, but like many geeks, my trivia knowledge is somewhat niche and not always suitable for the sorts of general knowledge other trivia games mm -hmm. rely on. If you aren't really a trivia game fan, this game probably won't win you over. Now, that said, if what you don't like about trivia games are the limited categories, the out-of-date questions, and spending forever trying to land on the right spot, maybe you should give out try, Outsmarted a try, because those issues have been addressed in rather smart ways. Like me, you might also really learn to love this game, now only if I can find more folks to play with who also like it. Hey, if you've got a copy, you can play remotely with Sean now. Now, if you are a trivia fan, I've already basically said this, and you've had fond memories of collecting pie pieces and reading questions off cards, just pick this one up. You're going to dig it. Now, Outsmarted takes the tried and true classic gameplay of classic trivia board games and modernizes it and improves on it in so many ways. Now, if you are thinking of grabbing this game, there's no better time than now. I'm going to stay on all sales mini here for a minute, because right now, Qplay has Outsmarted marked down 30% off. Link in the show notes as usual. Well, that's it for our review of Outsmarted, a modern update to classic trivia-based board games. A burst of nostalgia for both of us, but also a reimagining of the genre that fixes many of the problems the original games it's based on had. Now, if you want to learn more about Outsmarted, you'll be able to check out my written review over on the blog, where I'll be able to go into a little more detail than we had time for here, as well as providing many of pictures from our gameplays. Do you enjoy trivia games? What's your favorite? Is it the classic Trivial Pursuit or something else? Tell us about it in the comments below.